Welcome to Inside Monster Jam, powered by Lucas Oil, the official Monster Jam podcast. I'm Scott Jordan. My guests this week just made their grand return to Monster Jam and has been the talk of the town. So let's go to the Great Clips Hotline to North Carolina to welcome back John Zimmer, senior and junior to the show. Gentlemen, welcome back to Inside Monster Jam. Great to see you. Uh, yeah, it's awesome. I appreciate it, man. Glad to be back. Absolutely. Uh, so, so as I mentioned, it's, it's been the talk of the sport since the lineups were announced. And this wasn't even something where a grand announcement was made. It was like one day we don't have lineups for Nashville. The next day we do. And there's pictures of John, Jim, John Zimmer Jr. and then John Zimmer Sr. And then everybody just got into, and, and no pun intended here, but an uproar over what the heck was going on and where you guys have been. So before we get to Nashville, let's talk about this year, 2024 the Monster Jam season. So you guys end, end 2023 on a high note at World Finals, and then the lineups are announced, and you guys are conspicuously absent when it comes to competing on a season. So can we talk a little bit about what happened and why there was a split for you guys from Team Overboard? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think it was 100% really mutual, uh, just different views of where we wanted to go and, and what they wanted to do uh, I have huge respect for that team. They really, I mean, look at Zach. He's a world champion, so he was our teammate. I still talk to Zachy and very close with both Jonathan and I. So that was a mutual split. Um, and where it went from there kind of was a, it was really a whirlwind for us, I would say. Um, I have a very good friend named Don Doty, who a, was a sponsor of mine for years, but very quiet sponsor. He was kind of a mentor of, just somebody I looked up to, you know, as far as what is he had done for his life. And he was actually involved with us when we were on the overboard team as a kind of a, a sponsor, a silent sponsor. And when we made the decision to leave, uh, I was talking to him and I'll never forget it. It was a light switch. It just was like, well, I know what we're doing. <laughs> and I mean, I, the details are crazy and how fast it all went, but within a matter of a few weeks, we were, brand new chassis and, and a team and, and names, everything was rolling. Wow. That, that's, that's exciting because it usually doesn't happen that fast. But for a junior, as far as your your role in this, when, when dad came to you and told you, were you 100% on board or was this a little hard for you to, uh, you know, leave leave your friend and leave that team? I, I know as, as, as a son, if my dad, you know, tells me, hey, we're going to go do this, I'm there in a heartbeat. Was it the same for you? Yeah, so I'm on, I'm on both sides of it because I've been friends with Zach right. for the I think 13, since I was 13 years old when I first met him. So we've been best friends ever since. And I still talk to him every single day. I was talking to him during World Finals. I He called me. We were talking about World Finals. The night it ended at like 4 in the morning because I was driving down the road. We were leaving from a show. So definitely that side of it was hard to leave. But I knew going this route was – it's like another door opening. It's a big opportunity I've been driving trucks for three years with Team Overboard, but I've never owned my own truck. And that's what it is. Our whole partnership that we have going on with Don Doty and a bunch of other people behind the scenes, these trucks and this team is truly ours. So you can't say no to that. No, of course, that's a great opportunity. Uh, now, now, John Sr., you were acting as crew chief for Zach and for John Jr., but now you are also team owner. Was there was there a little bit of of trepidation as far as now you have even more of a responsibility? Not only are you crew chief, dad, but you're a team owner, and you're going to become an active driver again. Uh, I am. I loved being the crew, crew chief side, but this whole deal with with Don and Carolyn, who are they're the main partners and owners, it's such a group effort that. There's responsibility, but I don't feel it. Carol Ann takes unbelievable amount of load off of me, whether it's the part, ordering parts or the merchandise. And just so many things that I can just walk in the office and be like, hey, can you see if I need this? Is this possible? And I can go right back to work and concentrate on the, the monster trucks and driving them. So without them, it's like none of this is remotely possible. And obviously terminal velocity John, is your your identity, and you've, we've had it. We talked about that last time you were here, but where did this uproar identity come from? Uh, so for me, it was when we were talking about doing this and coming up with names, in my head, I wanted to somewhat throw back towards the shock therapy scheme and yeah. colors, not so much where maybe the fans noticed it, but for me, it had meaning. And then name-wise, well, I couldn't come up with 
any names. There's so many names out there in the industry that are just amazing. And Carolina and I were just sitting in the office one day and she will shoot out random names that make no sense and names that are just amazing. And she all of a sudden just hit me with uproar and I loved it from the beginning because I always say now, win, lose, or draw, you're going to leave in an uproar when I'm done. Comes, It's like built-in merchandise already cashing the check for you. Uh, John Jr., what are your thoughts on the uproar names? Did you like it when you heard it? Uh, I liked it a lot, but I was totally in the dark on, like, what it was supposed to look like because, that like, it's his own thing, you know? Like, when I was coming up with my stuff, he had no idea what I was planning in the back. So it was, it was like going back and forth with a surprise and uh, – when I seen the design for it the very first time when the rap guys came to our shop and they were putting the graphics on the body, I was like, that's sneaky because it's brand new, looks different, but it still looks like shock therapy for the yeah. people that look, that know. And it's absolutely incredible to see it for the first time. Just a small hint of nostalgia makes the world go around here. I love it. Coming up next, more with the Zimmers as we continue rocking on Inside Monster Jam, powered by Lucas Oil. Welcome back to Inside Monster Jam, powered by Lucas Oil. This week, I am joined by John Sr. and John Jr. The Zimmers are back in Monster Jam, and we are breaking it all down for you. So uh, let's get to the formation, the creation of this Send It Motorsports team. I know you said that within a, a couple weeks, a couple months, you had these new chassis built. So obviously, these both of these trucks are, are, are just completely brand spanking new? Yeah, 100% brand wow. new. I mean, the best of the best parts, um, we use a Bruzy Transmissions and Richard Midget with Midget Motorsports for the engines. We ran right out of the gate with fuel injection, which a lot of guys don't do, but we wanted it up to date, yeah. the best there is, and the new stuff. So, yeah, it's 100% brand new, um, and it's pretty crazy. And as far as the name Send It Motorsports, is that a collaboration with, with the two of you as well as your, your, your co-owners of the team as well? Yeah, every every bit of it it's like it's not just dad and i that right. is sending motorsports there's there's a big group of us behind involved with it and we didn't even come up with the name sending motorsports because as you could tell with him trying to come up with his name he's not very good at coming up with names i got lucky picking yeah. my name years ago right so it was really up to the group of people that we had backing us they all kind of came up with it and then when we got researching on like the business side of things we noticed that it wasn't being used which is crazy is how it could send it motorsports right. like a motor sports as a whole no one's using that yeah which was crazy so once we knew that that was wide open just take it uh, senior last time we saw you driving in monster jam you, you took the reins of wild side and then uh you know went back to crew and again now we get this new reinvigorated john zimmer senior i talked to you off the air about how good it is to see you back behind the wheel of a truck were you just getting the itch to to get back out there and do this on a, on a weekend basis I don't necessarily know if it was an itch, to be honest with you. I think a lot of it was just how things were playing out for us. And for me, it gave, like right off, Jonathan and I talked, and and he said that he would love to do one full season of Monster Jam together. So yeah. that was sort of like, okay, I have to do it, right? I do love driving. I still enjoy the competitive edge of it. Uh, so getting back in this year has been amazing, especially getting into the arenas recently. It's like, I forgot how small and also how good the new age drivers are. So it's been a blast. I really love doing it. And, and I look forward to it at least another couple of years. Well, see, we, 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 we're seeing this a lot now in sports where dads are going out of the way for their sons. We saw LeBron James uh, and, and, and his involvement in getting his son Bronny drafted. But see, on, on that side, Bronny's throwing bricks up in the G League. Meanwhile, John Zimmer Jr. is out here winning overall event championships. So it's, it's a little bit of a different dynamic there with you two getting it done. Let's talk about the independent scene for you, um, w which is something I, I do like to talk about, you know, on this show because for independent drivers, it's not always Monster Jam. I mean, yes, for the season it is, but you guys have run some independent events before you came back to Monster Jam. So how was that for you to, to break these new trucks in out there? Uh, I mean, uh, it worked perfect for us. We knew doing what we did with the team that there was a good shot that we wouldn't run Monster Jam right off because everything was happening so fast and people had to plan ahead. And yeah, obviously our goal was to be back where we are. But uh, I have a very good friend that's in the business as a promoter. And as soon as we even mentioned what we were doing, he was like, oh, I, I want you guys, you know, so. We did his tour in the independent world, and it was perfect with the brand new trucks because they let us work out all the bugs, at least on my side of it. 
Yeah, it, it definitely, speaking of bugs and stuff, you know, with brand new trucks and, you know, it's just like typical monster truck world, monster truck business. We're coming down to the wire. Jan first weekend of January is coming up. We went, we had our trucks finished, went and tested them in the field and mine tested out great, good to go. Go to test his the rear locker and his was already broke, blew a seal out on the transmission. I mean, parts are already getting slung on these trucks. So it was great to go into a tour. It was still competitive and it was still high pressure, but we were able to work our bugs out before we came back. On is that is that was that just the rust john senior on, on you having the broken parts instead of junior <laughs> yeah it seems to be this truck seems to take more yeah. but now now i think it's all figured out so uh who made the initial phone call to get you back into monster jam i think it was it was probably me right off just talk i mean obviously i've done this for a really long time and i know a lot of people so and it wasn't I don't know that there was a true decision made. I just, I put it out there to what we were doing and, and we kind of let it ride. Obviously, I think Monster Jam knew because of our background and my background, that's where we wanted to go. Uh, and then it just sort of fell into place. All right, well, I'm loving it. We are going to break down that Nashville debut coming up next with the Zimmers on Inside Monster Jam, powered by Lucas Oil. Welcome back to Inside Monster Jam, powered by Lucas Oil, the official Monster Jam podcast. I'm Scott Jordan. This week, I am joined by the Zimmers as they have made the return to Monster Jam. And we're going to break that down right now. So we go to Nashville uh, Nissan Stadium, which ironically, Junior, is where you competed last in Monster Jam at World Finals in a stadium event. So then you come back and do your first stadium show there. So first, let's talk to you about, you know, being in that same atmosphere as World Finals and being in this stadium environment to come back into Monster Jam. It was insane. Like, like to make a huge long story short, I know we got all the time in the world, Scott. We'll sit here and talk your ear off, and everyone <laughs> can sit here and listen to us just ramble about these monster truck stories. But uh, it, when I heard that we were coming back into Monster Jam, and we were throwing around a bunch of scheduling ideas in the in behind the scenes, Dad had kept telling me that he's like, we might have some stadiums, and you know, of course, the last stadium I competed in was Nissan Stadium at World Finals. I didn't think that's where we were going to be. So when we actually showed up to Nissan Stadium, a huge load of pressure was taken off my shoulders because I was familiar with where I was. Yeah. So I just wanted to go out and have that same success story like I did at World Finals. But unfortunately, even though we just got talking about trucks and working the bugs out, mine decided to show all its bugs that night. It happens to the best of us, man. But senior, you have a lot of stadium experience throughout your career. Was there an adjustment for you, you know, getting back out of the arenas and from the independent tracks and going into this giant layout uh, in, in Nashville? Uh, a little, I would say racing only because, A, I haven't done a stadium, I would say, since 2020. Uh, and the new track, you know, this track design wasn't out there. So that was definitely adjustment racing-wise. Uh, Freestyle-wise, it really didn't bother me. I would say like if I was going to do that tour more, I'd really pay attention to ramps more and, and distances because those tracks are really designed for either sending it and going right to the middle or you almost have to tiptoe around so you don't trip yourself up. So for me, I was happy with the way it went. I think I ended up fourth, uh, got the backflip in. But yeah, if I was going to be on that style tour more, I would really study it more and figure out what works for me. As far as expectations go, uh, John Jr., you said you, you the bugs showed in your truck. So were you not happy with the way things went, or were you just happy to be back in Monster Jam and, and give it a go out there? I, I was still happy just to be back and yeah. be competing again, especially on the stadium. And my truck was 100%. It was 100% right when round one or round two of racing because I somehow got lucky, got the round two by, so I'm sitting there. You know, doing a little leg twitch in my truck, waiting for all the other rounds of racing to go. And uh, pull up to the line round two. And, of course, I got the fastest one of the entire lineup. is no other than Ryan Anderson. So I knew I had to push it, give it, I don't know, I was driving as hard as I could, pushing my truck as hard as it could go. I just came around that last turn, hit the little turn box or turn dirt pod, whatever that is. Never lifted, jumped across the race lane crooked, and landed, had to get on the brakes so I didn't slide out of bounds, and uh, ended up breaking an inner axle, which twisted it, and it got stuck inside the front third member, so I couldn't fix that. Who's crewing for you guys right now? With the two of you back behind the wheel, who do you have on your team? 
Uh, so like Jonathan was saying, and I was saying, we had a really big group of support. So we have Kylie Kent, who is the daughter of Carol Ann Don. And she, I knew as a very little girl, and she would come to independent shows and she was around. Well, now she's 21 years old. So when we got rolling on this, it really light a, lit a fire under her. Like she was super excited. So she does the, all of the website stuff. She's learning to work in the shop with Jonathan and I. And she'll come on the road with us quite a bit. And she's also now getting some seat time in our third truck and learning to drive. So she's around quite a bit. She does go to some shows. And then we have a guy, another boy local here in Michigan, Garrett Fike, who he's a young kid that grew up working really hard. And he just randomly came to some shows with us. And I was like, I don't know that I've never seen anyone more natural at crewing. Like he just, bam, gets it done hard worker and then my nephew now works for us so yeah we have a big group of people behind us are you so you guys are in michigan now not in north carolina yeah michigan so michigan. you all right so you moved operations so there we go we, we got to adjust the great clips hotline michigan now you're joining the Kohlers up there is uh, independent dominance i love that uh let's talk about manchester and allentown so nashville's out of the way you go back into the arenas manchester you do a little better and then Allentown, Pennsylvania rolls in and you walk out uh, junior with the overall event championship. Describe your emotions to hold that trophy in your hand once again and uh, be out there on the top of the leaderboard. It was it was awesome because it had felt like I had picked up right where I'd left off that 2023 season. And uh, it was it was a hard fought weekend in Allentown. And I can't cut anybody slack out there. I think Dak can attest that too. We had Tyler and Tony like them two were battling it out all weekend long. And I was right there, right behind them in third and fourth. You know, I was just inching away. That final event, you know, I, I was I was out round one racing. I'd lost right away, so I had two points or whatever it was. So I didn't even know that I was in the running. I just finished my freestyle run, had my truck out back. The crew was getting it tired down, and I come walking back in, and they had that little – points board up on the screen and I was like those look oddly like my points because I don't think anybody <laughs> else had two points in racing and yeah they announced my name as overall event champion and I was I was like a little kid again I just fell in love with the sport it was awesome that's great done uh senior obviously a proud dad moment for you as well oh yeah always you know that's one of the funnest things now driving and being together is you know I still go out there and drive 110 percent always and but it's to be back then sitting in the truck strapped in waiting for my turn and then it always hits you like especially during freestyle watching him drive is like man that's that's my son out there you know like that's my teammate and he is kicking butt so it's just a really cool feeling so what does the uh the immediate future hold for send it motorsports and uproar in terminal velocity as it, as it comes to to monster jam will you guys be are planning on competing in 2025 uh, on, on a championship series? I'm a firm believer in things play out and happen for a reason. So if that's where we are, that's where I want to be, and that's where he wants to be. So, I mean, that's the overall goal, yeah. And Junior C and Zach win a world championship. Uh, I'm, I know you were happy for your friend, but obviously that, that's that got to sort of be where you want to be, right? And, and we're going to Salt Lake City next year, so perfect season to warm up and for you to bring a world final championship home. That's absolutely the goal. You know, I was on cloud nine for Zach. Like, we were in the middle of doing our own show in the independent world, and I'm sitting in my truck, and I have my phone. I keep my phone in my pocket. Probably not a good idea anyway. That thing could probably fly out, but... Every time I would back in and I'm waiting, you know, they're doing whatever out there on the track. And I have the world finals pulled up on my phone. I'm watching each round of racing go by and I'm cheering my friend on and seeing him win that. I knew that was a huge dream come true for him. That's definitely a dream of mine. So if next year the cards play out, we get a 25 season and I, you know, find myself out there at world finals, which I hopefully Hopefully I'm out there for something. And uh, if it's racing and freestyle, I'm definitely going for that racing championship. All right, that'd be a great moment to have in Salt Lake City. Coming up next, your fan questions for the Zimmers when we come back with more Inside Monster Jam, powered by Lucas Oil.
We are back with more Inside Monster Jam powered by Lucas Oil. My guests this week are John Sr. and John Jr. The Zimmers are back in Monster Jam. You can in, get your questions into the show on Instagram at Scott Jordan MJSX. So let's get to some fan questions for the both of you. This one is for Jr. If the opportunity arises for you to compete on a point series for Monster Jam next year, who would you want to compete against the most other than your father? And that comes from Brennan.jump. Honestly, that's that's a hard one to pick from, but it's also easy at the same time. I'd love to go right back to competing against my best friend, Zach. If we got pulled up on a tour, you know, if we had I seen that lineup and he was on it, it'd be going straight back to old times, just giving each other so much crap every weekend and just going at it on the track. It'd be awesome. And then it wouldn't also be bad to beat the World Finals Racing Champion on a weekly basis on the racetrack, right? That's got, that's got to offer some some points there, too. Absolutely. I would definitely for sure give it to him every time we'd line up. Uh, Mike Trapper 04 is asking about your reactions to seeing Zach win the World Finals Racing Championship. Uh, Junior, you, you talked about that. You were watching it. Senior, what were your initial reactions uh, when you found out that Zach won the World Finals Racing Championship? Oh, I thought it was awesome. Uh, I've always been that. When we toured together, Zach, was, we would joke and I would say he was my stepson. But I really look at Zach that way. The kid has a heart of gold. It's very rare to even see him upset at life. Like he just rolls with everything. It doesn't matter what it is. And we pick on him for that. So <laughs> to see him go out there and he, he has talent. He's always had amazing talent behind the wheel. Uh, so when, for him to win it, it was like, heck yeah, Zachy. You know, I looked at it like he deserved it. He is truly one of the best of the young generation. So yeah, it was awesome. That was uh, one of the craziest racing brackets I've ever witnessed. All right, what's in the box? RC is asking, any chance we'll see you guys on the international tour down the road? I mean, if if there's an opportunity, to go, I've always wanted to go overseas and just to even go do it for a weekend. If we didn't have a tour or whatever it was, if the opportunity presented itself, I think I'd more so jump at it than he would. I think he's, I think he's been around all the other countries and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I would say... You probably won't necessarily see it, but I would not count anything out. All right. Anything's possible. We'll go with that, and we'll leave it there. Guys, thanks so much for being here again. I appreciate it. Great seeing you, and a welcome back to Monster Jam. Awesome, man. Thank you, Scott. All Thank right. you for having us. See you soon. I'll see you guys right here next week with another brand-new episode of Inside Monster Jam, powered by Lucas Oil.